Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the meeting of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. I am Council Member Francisco Moya, uh, the Chairperson of the Subcommittee. And today we are joined by Council Members Constantinidis, uh, Levin, uh, Rivera, Richards, Torres, and Gredenchek. Um, let me uh, start off by apologizing for uh, starting uh, a little late this morning, um, but we are now uh, going to proceed, so thank you for your patience. Um, if you are here to testify, uh, please fill out a white speaker slip with a sergeant at arms and indicate the name or the LU number of the application you wish to testify on on that slip. Uh, today, uh, we have only one hearing. It is on LU uh, 289, an application by 380 East uh, Ventures LLC, DBA Factory 380, for a new revocable consent to operate an unenclosed sidewalk cafe at 380 3rd Avenue in Council Member Rivera's district in Manhattan. Uh, I now open up the public hearing on this application. Uh, are there any members of the public who wish to testify? Uh, Seeing none, uh, I now close the. Oh, yep. Yeah. Remarks. Yeah. I, I just before we close that, I want to uh, turn it over uh, to Council Member Rivera uh, for some remarks. Thank you so thank much, you. Mr. Chair, for this opportunity, uh, and thank you for your consideration of ULERP 2019503 ATCM 380 East Ventures LLC DBA Factory 380 an application to maintain and operate an unenclosed sidewalk cafe. Manhattan Community Board 6 had objections to the initial application because the footprint of nine tables and 18 seats would add significantly to sidewalk congestion in an already crowded area. In addition, the applicant did not appear before the board, therefore CB6 resolved to oppose this application. My office has since deliberated with the applicant who agreed to reduce the number of seats in their application to five tables and 10 seats. Although CB6 would prefer four tables and eight seats, I believe that the business's willingness to almost have its capacity is sufficient, especially as we consider the cost of rent in the area and the need to compete in a popular corridor. Based on my staff's conversations with this applicant, I also believe the partners and managers will work cooperatively with the community and address concerns as they arise. Please find, you'll also find uh, part of the application a letter of agreement from Robert Sousa, owner of 380 Ventures, LLC, DBA Factory 380. With this agreement, I lend my support to this sidewalk cafe license and encourage you and the rest of the committee to vote to approve the application as amended. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member Rivera, for your remarks. Uh, are there any other members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application. Uh, we will now move on to our votes. Uh, we will vote on, uh, we will vote to approve LU uh, 289, the application that uh, we just heard. Uh, we will also be voting on applications that were the subject of prior hearings, uh, except that LUs 280 and 281, uh, an application for a zoning map amendment to rezone 25-28 uh, J Street in Council Member uh, Levin's district in Brooklyn will be laid over. We will be voting to modify LUs uh, 272 to, through uh, 277, the Marcus uh, Garvey Village applications for uh, zoning map amendments, uh, zoning text amendments, acquisitions, uh, dispositions, and two special permits. Our modification will require lower heights and setbacks for the proposed buildings in order to address the scale and relationship to the existing buildings and to ensure more light and air. Our modification will also ensure that 68 parking spaces are provided. We will be voting to modify LU 259, the citywide M1 hotel special permit tax amendment. Our modifications will ensure that areas near LaGuardia and JFK airports are subject to the new special permit requirements, uh, strengthen, strengthen the findings related to adjacencies to industrial businesses, and ensure that hotel operations do not have negative impacts on surrounding communities. We will also be adding an exclusion to uh, facilitate a unique mixed-use uh, adaptive reuse project in which a hotel use will help enable the additional uh, important public policy objectives where a hotel use compromising 
30% or less of the total project will help enable the activation of space for light industrial uh, arts and office users, resulting in significant job creation and revitalization of an area. We will be voting to modify LU-269, the Special Garment Center uh, text amendment. Our modification will create zoning text that will allow for inclusion of a hotel in a mixed-use uh, project with permanently affordable housing subject to an HPD regulatory agreement uh, without a hotel special permit. Uh, I also want to quickly, before we go into, acknowledge that we've been joined by um, uh, Majority Leader uh, Cumbo. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I want to take this opportunity right now uh, to read uh, the speaker's remarks uh, regarding the uh, garment district. Uh, the speaker is uh, under the weather this morning, so uh, he asked me to deliver a few remarks on his behalf. Uh, I want to begin by acknowledging the partnership of Borough President Gail Brewer and Jim Karras on her staff. The Borough President has, over the course of more than two years, pulled many of us together to debate and develop strategies for preserving the fashion incubator that is the Garment District. I also want to recognize the hard work and dedication of many of the participants of the Garment Steering Committee who developed the ideas and recommendations who are here today. Uh, and I want to thank the agencies, the Economic Development Corporation, uh, and the Department of City Planning for their willingness to accept feedback. Many New Yorkers have deep ties to the Garment District. Uh, it is a place of inextricably linked to our city's history, but also uh, our present, and I'm very and I very much believe our future, which belongs, which brings us to the vote today. Uh, for a variety of reasons, the financial realities around garment production in Midtown have changed, and now we have much smaller collection of garment manufacturers than we had 30 years ago when the zoning was put in place. My goal over the course of the last several weeks has been to build on the work uh, to date over the last several years to make sure that we have as stable as stable a foundation as possible for garment manufacturing while recognizing the evolution of the district. Based on much of the feedback from community boards, the BP, and other garment stakeholders, we have had significant progress. Uh, one, we have secured a commitment for approximately 270,000 of the garment manufacturer, ma manufacturing preserved through the IDA with, with more to, to come, we expect. Uh, we have secured a commitment from the bid to provide support for the industry working with stakeholders to the tune of 2.5 million per year uh, over 10 years with meaningful industry industry feedback. In, additional, in addition, the 14 million the CFDA and the EDC are committing to provide to support garment manufacturing. LPC is going to be doing a study uh, to examine potential landmark designations. Uh, DOT is doing something similar for the garment uh, center area to examine ways we can improve the pedestrian infrastructure. And on an issue near and dear to my heart, we are also making a clear commitment to close any reasonable funding gap for building acquisition for a garment manufacturing hub. There are many, many other pieces to this puzzle, and the administration has agreed to convene an advisory group to continue to work through the implementation and to ensure clear communication. Again, I want to thank the community boards four and five, Pratt Center, Design Trust, CFDA, the BID, Mass, uh, Yao Li, Tang, and many, many others uh, for all their work to get us here. And I look forward to continuing to work together to make sure we push as hard as we can to achieve the right outcomes for the people who work here and for the broader needs of the fashion industry in Midtown as a whole. And now we will, we will vote to approve LUs uh, 270 and 271, the 1451 Franklin Avenue rezoning uh, for property in Majority Leader Cumbo's district in Brooklyn. Uh, this application is for rezoning from a R6A to R6A C13 and R8A to R8X and R8X C24 and will apply MIH option one to the rezoning areas. Uh, Majority Leader Cumbo uh, has remarks about how this project has changed during this process, and I wanted to turn it over to you, Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Chair Moya, and thank you for your leadership. I want to thank all of my colleagues that are also here today. The Franklin Avenue rezoning, 
a proposal for development on either side of Tivoli Towers on Franklin Avenue and Crown Heights presents a difficult choice for my community. This has probably been one of the most difficult uh, projects that I've ever had to oversee as far as um, the negotiations. But in this particular project, the choices were clear, but they were also clearly undesirable. We were presented with either building 278 units of luxury condominiums with prices starting at $900,000 in a seven-story building in a highly gentrifying community in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. And everyone understands the implications that 278 units of luxury condominiums would have on a community such as Crown Heights. And then we were given the other option of building a 16-story development with 518 units, and only 140 of the 518 units would be affordable to the Crown Heights community. It simply was not enough affordability to justify building a 16-story building with no community benefits or quality jobs. I hear it every day from my constituents. Affordable housing is at the top priority of Crown Heights. But unfortunately, we have not built enough affordable housing to keep pace with the rampant gentrification that is eroding so many families from where they are currently living. More and more new developments are coming in with market rate apartments far above what most community residents can afford and bringing in new businesses that cater to a new population. We must urgently deploy every tool available to preserve affordable housing in Crown Heights and increase the inclusiveness of new development. With this in mind, I am proud today, and this is nothing short of a miracle, to announce that I have secured commitments from Carmel Partners to both increase their on-site affordable housing and to partner with Asian Americans for Equality, also known as AFI. Although development on the AFI site will require an additional ULERP application to remove deed restrictions put in place by HPD, I am confident that this will move forward expeditiously with HPD support. Altogether, on the two applicant development sites and the AFI site, we project the future development will now include 627 total residential units split between 378 market rate units and 258 affordable units. This is now a 60-40 split. This is an increase from the original proposal that was only going to offer 140 affordable units. This represents nearly double the amount of affordable units that was originally proposed. If this rezoning was turned down and we left the R6A district in place, we would see 100% market rate development of 278 units on the Carmel Cornell sites and only 20 to 30% of the units affordable on the AFI site. For those who might rightly ask, affordable to who? It's a question that comes up in every land use meeting. But let me be clear, the median income household in my district is approximately 58,000. There are tens of thousands of households in the district making between 25 to 75,000 who would be eligible for most housing created by MIH and HPD developments, but may have a difficult time finding an affordable apartment on the market. For example, one person making minimum wage, $15 an hour full time, would typically qualify affordable housing at the 40 AMI level. A family of one at 40 AMI is approximately $29,000. Two people making minimum wage, $15 an hour full time with two children, would qualify for affordable housing at the 60 AMI level. A family of four at 60 AMI is approximately $62,580. These affordable units will be at an average of the 60 AMI level that can range from 40 to 100 AMI. The choice on this project was never development versus no development, and I have no doubt that we are making the right decision for the community to move forward with this new agreement. Let me quickly address some of the other concerns and benefits of the project. Regarding shadows on the Brooklyn Botanic Garden, the Brooklyn Botanic Garden is an institution that has been such a vital part of the vitality of Brooklyn, New York. I take this issue very seriously, and I would never approve a project that does significant harm to the garden. 
We have a letter from the Brooklyn Botanic Garden to the City Planning Commission stating clearly that based on their own independent analysis, this project would not have a significant impact on the garden. And just to read an ic excerpt from the letter, uh, Scott Medbury, the president of the Brooklyn Botanic Garden said, the garden is not taking a position, in quote, on this project, in large part because it does not appear to have a significant impact on the garden's living collections. Last year, the garden had the metho methodology of the project's EIS shadow study checked by an expert and confirmed that the shadow study was performed according to state specifications. We then reviewed the EIS study and have concluded that the project would not have significant impact on the garden." End quote. I am also pleased that Carmel Partners has agreed to retain Building Skills NY to conduct construction job training classes for local residents and list open employment opportunities with a preference for Crown Heights residents workshops. Carmel has also reached an agreement with 32BJ to require that all permanent building staff be union labor. Carmel will also set aside at least 1,500 square feet in the project for community facility use for a small business incubator or local arts or education organization. I would like to thank the applicants and AFI for working towards an agreement. My staff, Raju Men, Brian Paul, Crystal Hudson, and all the members of the public who weighed in on this important project. With all of this said, this is now a project that I can loudly and proudly support, and I urge my colleagues to vote yes. This was a very difficult project, and I really thank everyone for all of their work. It was a lot of late nights, a lot of angry phone calls, a lot of banging on tables, and slam doors, but we finally got to a decision and what I'm most proud about this project is that we are going to be delivering double the amount of affordable housing. And that's going to benefit over 258 families in the Crown Heights community in a very meaningful way. And between this project as well as the Bedford Union Armory project, we're bringing more affordable housing to Crown Heights than they have seen in decades. So I proudly urge my colleagues to vote yes on this project and I thank all of them for their support. Thank you, uh, Majority Leader Cumbo. Uh, Council, please call the roll. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I now call uh, for a vote to approve uh, 270, 271, and 289, and to approve with modifications LU uh, 259, 269, and 272 through 277. Council, please call the roll. Moya. Aye and all. Constantinides. Aye and all. Levin. Aye on all. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Gradenchik. Aye. The land use items are approved by a vote of six in the affirmative, no negative, and no abstentions, and referred to the full land use committee. This concludes today's. Did we leave the vote open? Yes. We'll leave the vote open. I just want to thank my colleagues for their patience today and to the public. Thank you very much. We will uh, leave the roll open for a few more minutes. Thank you.